We welcome each of you here tonight. We always look forward to these moments, particularly these monthly meetings that we're dealing with living stones, relating to the 12 gates, the 12 tribes, the uniqueness of 12 being the divine foundational number, the structure, the order of everything that shall endure and stand that God is building through our faith and through our experience. Tonight we will be looking at the tribe of Asher or the stone of Asher. Shalopsa will be sharing and bringing that to light to us. And understand all of these stones were part of the breastplate or breast piece of the high priest when he went into the holy place. Not the most holy, but the holy place. And God communicated through that concerning the tribes of Israel and gave them direction. Notice again the significance of priesthood. So as the word goes forth tonight, we want to allow it to speak into our heart to establish what God is doing and where He's taking us as a people. Because this is where the order and the structure comes that we may build our house, our faith, in congruence with the entire process of what God's doing. He's building up His house, and we are that house. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just thank You for the anointing of the Holy Spirit tonight, releasing through the Word, through Sally tonight, by the anointing, a powerful communication, an utterance from heaven that will spark life in our heart and establish truth that we may possess our inheritance in its fullness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm so glad the Holy Spirit is here to release the life of this particular stone, Asher. It does mean happy and blessed, and I know that there is a blessing in store for all of us. And as we've been looking at the 12 tribes one by one, this is the fifth of 12, the gates of the city, they are 12 experiences or stepping stones that we go through to enter into a fullness or a full manifestation of light. And even today as Ken and I were walking, I just felt that it's like not a stepping stone anymore. It's like a leap. <laughs> so I just feel with the acceleration of the spirit that truly God is wanting us in our experience with love, who is light, that there would truly be a, a moving forward in an unprecedented manner. And every gate or stone, it proclaims a message. And the message for tonight is happy and blessed. <laughs> and in all of our journey, it's an unfolding journey where there is a formation of light. And in our formation, you know, Paul prayed, I pray and travail until Christ be formed in you. So there is a formation that's happening within us. And truly a gem that's handcrafted by the Holy Spirit is being formed. And um, it's, a, it's a wonderful season that truly, um, May 1st, and God is just really saying, yeah, I am powerful on your behalf, especially in this month of May. Glory. So we're going to look at Revelation chapter 21, verse 19. And as we know, the book of Revelation, it's a spiritual book for spiritual people, and we have to have spiritual ears and spiritual hearts to hear now what the Spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. Amen? Hallelujah. And I do just release the operation of the Spirit mm -hmm. that this would sink into our heart and resonate heaven to heaven. Glory. Revelation 21, 19. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was Jasper. And remember Jasper that was walking in your high places? That was the tribe of Nephtali. And the second, Sapphire. And remember Sapphire was a stone of Simeon. And that was a paved work. And the third is Chalcedony. 
and that was Zebulon being placed as light. The fourth we looked at was Emerald, behold a sun. And the fifth is Sardonyx, or the onyx, the Asher stone. And we're going to see scripture defines this stone as the best blessed stone. Don't you like the best? <laughs> so, hallelujah. The first mention of the onyx stone is very interesting. And that takes me to Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. Now, a river, it doesn't give a name to this river, flowed. This river is the Holy Ghost, and I know the Holy Spirit is flowing, the river is flowing now in our midst. Now a river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and you're the garden that the river is flowing out of, and you're the garden that the river is watering. So, and from there it divided and became four rivers. This month we're going to hear a lot about the number four. Four is a powerful number, but it went into four rivers. Verse 11, the name of the first river is Pison, and it flows don't you like that word flow? <laughs> Around the whole land of Ahavilah. And in this land where it flowed, notice what's there. Where there is gold. Glory. God likes gold. Gold is the divine nature. In your garden, you are the garden of the Lord. There is gold up in them there hills. Hallelujah. Meaning there is a divine nature. You are partaking of the nature of Christ. Glory. The second thing that's there, verse 12, the gold of that land is good. And the bedellum, that is the pearl. That's the second thing that's there. And the onyx stone is there in the garden. Glory. That is good news. So in your garden, which you are, we see three ingredients. And we know the pearl speaks of white, and it's the salvation or it's the righteousness. Right here, I see the kingdom, meaning the gold is the kingly, which is righteousness or it's joy. And then the pearl is the righteousness. And here we see onyx, and we'll link it with peace or the priesthood. Anytime there's a peace, it brings pre priesthood, it brings peace. Make sense? So we see the kingdom right here. Hallelujah. We, we see a flow of four and four channels and it's reflecting heaven on earth. And it does make the city glad, glory. And it resources that city. So Right here in this river, in this Havilah land, by the river, what is this? There, there's items there that need to be unearthed or excavated or dug out. And we, that's kind of what the revelation of Christ is. It's an unveiling. Amen? So the Holy Spirit is uh, going to find in your land all these ingredients of righteousness and bring it out so it flows of peace so it flows out and of joy so that there is a flow glory so the river of life is the source of all healing and what it does and what it is doing even tonight it's restoring a connection between father and son it's restoring a wholeness between heaven and earth, a oneness. Yeah. Truly, heaven is desperate to manifest in our earth. Yeah. Hallelujah. And um, Psalms 46, 4 says, There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place, the holy dwelling places of the Most High God. Glory. So this tells us 
in the midst of you is dwelling the Most High God, and there is a river that is flowing through your garden. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We felt it before we began, that river that's flowing. It's a river of anointing, and that river, who is the Holy Spirit, who we are connected with, because out of your belly flows rivers of living water, that river, which you are, sons of God, is the remedy. The river is the remedy. That river of Pison is a remedy. That river actually means love. It's a shedding abroad, the love of God that's shedding abroad. But there is a connection even now that we're sensing of the eternal, the infinite realm. It's a spirit of the law of life in Christ Jesus that's operating in the river. I want to jump in the river. I want to splash in the river. But not only that, I want to express the river of life because the river is rhetoric of life and truth that truly brings change and it brings a manifestation of peace, hallelujah, and of joy and of right relationship, glory. So we see once again in that land, the first place we see, we see gold, which is the king or which brings joy. We see the pearl or the bedellum, which speaks of the prophet, the prophetic, which is the righteousness, and the onyx, which is peace, or the priesthood, the onyx stone. And we'll see where this comes into play more. Genesis 30, verse 13 says, and Leah said, Happy am I, for women will call me happy. So she named him Asher. <laughs> and the spiritual provision or understanding we get from the tribe of Asher is truly the experience of a rich, rich blessing of the Lord in the overwhelming joy of the kingdom or the joy in the Holy Ghost. And truly it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, and that's in 1 Peter 1, 8. But believe in Him, 1 Peter 1, 8, you greatly rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Father wants us to come within our experience and relationship with him to a manifestation of our completeness. The word and truth says we are complete in Christ. And there is joy inexpressible and full of glory, meaning it's a kind and quality of joy in the spirit. It's heaven's joy or brand Hallelujah. And it's a divine spiritual joy that is ours. Glory. It's the kingdom of God, and it's where? It's in the Holy Ghost, which is in us, in our spirits. Hallelujah. And as we share in the emotion of joy, we share, participate, cooperate with the emotions of God himself. You know? He joys and rejoices over us. And the joy of the kingdom is eternal and it is unaffected by anything that happens in the outward world temporal circumstances. And that's good news because the kingdom is an unshakable kingdom. We are receiving a kingdom, hallelujah, that can't be shaken. Yeah. Glory. Glory. The firstborn son, Jesus Christ, he was happy and joyful with the joy of heaven. And happiness d doesn't depend on happenings, but on a relationship with the eternal great I am. And really, how much like Jesus are we? We can kind of gauge that temperature by how much peace we have, how much joy we have, and that goes back to our right relationship with the eternal, with Father. Hallelujah. So we are blessed because this joy, it doesn't come from us. 
the river is the source of all good things. In John 15, 11, it says, These things I have spoken to you that my joy, notice it's his joy, my joy may be where? In you that your joy may be full. Hallelujah. This is good news. He makes our joy full because he gives us the joy. Glory. So there's nothing lacking, nothing missing. Hebrews 1 9 says, You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, you own this even now for you, has anointed you with the oil of gladness or joy above your companions. This joy comes from the realm of the heavenlies or the eternal, yes? This anointing flows from Christ to his body. The same anointing that was on Christ flows to the body. It's the anointing of the joy of sonship that we partake of. Hallelujah. Psalms 48.2 says, Beautiful in elevation. And see, God is wanting us to truly come up and awaken to Zion. You have come to Mount Zion. Zion is a high place. Yes? It's a realm in the spirit. Beautiful in elevation. Hallelujah. The joy of the whole earth. Meaning there's a lot of joy in Zion. The more and more we get promoted, and promotion comes from the north, which is Zion, the more we allow the spirit and the river of life to take us to the high places, the more and more joy and strength will operate in and through our lives. Isn't that good? Because it says that beautiful in elevation, it's a high place, the joy of the whole earth, that means there is an inexhaustible, unlimited Whoa. supply of joy. Yeah. Glory. I want more because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And truly, Father wants his city glad. Yeah. You are the city set on a hill that he wants glad and full of joy. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion in the far north, we know where it is, the city of the great king, glory. He's a great king and he gives good gifts. Every good and perfect gifts come from above, from the father of who? Lights, hallelujah. So as being a part of the heavenly citizenship, we are to be lights and to be the joy in the whole earth that starts in your earth glory don't you feel a little more joy don't you feel the river rising the river is rising hallelujah the hebrew root word for onyx the stone that we're looking at means a flashing forth of splendor to shine with the luster of fire. You all will like this. God wants you to sparkle. If you're mourning and downcast, are you reflecting the great king? No. We are to be bright and shining, yes? Light up your world, glory. You are permitted to sparkle, to shine, to be splendorous and radiant, glory. And I know this is a season for the restoration of joy, glory. David prayed, I restore to me the joy of my salvation. Grant me a willing spirit, hallelujah. Aren't you glad joy is being restored in your city? Yes. Hallelujah. So the names of the sons of Jacob or Israel were inscribed on the two onyx stones. Two is the number for witness or joining. Exodus 
25.7 says, Onyx stones and setting stones for the what? The ephod and for the breastplate. This here is where they were to bring all the gifts for the building of the sanctuary. You are the sanctuary. He's building with all manner of beauty, of precious stones. And one of those stones is the onyx stone. And where do we find that? We find that in Havilah. God provided it. You just need to dig for it. Okay? We need to go on an excavation adventure and find all the wisdom and treasures that are in Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. <laughs> so, the notice it says onyx stones and setting stones. Do you just... When I read this, do things kind of sparkle at you? Meaning, you, in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 18, but now God has placed or set the members, each one of them in the body, just as he desired. God is placing us how he wants so we shine as living stones fitly framed together that's a habitation that grows up and blesses god and blesses each other and blesses ourselves. because when we're placed when we find our place in christ you're glad amen, amen. god doesn't want misplaced displaced Stones. It is time that the stones get gathered and placed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And there is placement and settings that God is doing by His Spirit. And your steps are being ordered by the Lord. So we get secure and established on truth and the firm foundation which is Christ. Hallelujah. So, And also when you're placed and set in order, there's more joy. Because you kind of got more of a sense of purpose and direction. Make sense? Hallelujah. A little bit more about the onyx stone. Exodus 28 verse 9. And you shall take how many onyx stones? Two. What's that mean? It's a witness, a joining. Two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel. Six of their names on the one stone and the other names on the other stone according to birth now listen to this verse 12 you shall put two stones on the shoulder pieces what does this mean the government is upon his shoulder you see here on the high priest garment is the two onyx stones so we're, we're talking about a governmental order and God so orders and arranges it so it's done beautifully and magnificently. Hallelujah. As stones of memorial for the sons of Israel. We, memorial Day is coming up. And thank God for those who have served. But I do pray we would be uh, awakened to our forefathers and the memorial stones that we are incorporated in and we have been blessed with the blessing of their lives. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord on his two shoulders for memorial. And Aaron was the high priest, right? Okay. Aaron's name, it means illuminated, enlightened or a mountaineer meaning he liked high places and when you have a revelation when you got enlightenment you are taken to high places in Christ does that make sense yes. so hallelujah that's the high priest who had on his shoulders the two onyx stones and on the ephod which you see right there there's 12 stones on that ephod and we'll get into that a little bit more as we continue on in our stones meeting and every son was blessed by Israel and in Genesis chapter 49 verse 20 
Israel's blessing on Asher is this. Out of Asher. And this is like out of the happy blessed sun. Stone is sun. Meaning there is a flow that's coming through the tribe of Asher. Out of Asher, his bread or food shall be fat or rich. <laughs> and he shall yield royal dainties. We're talking about really experiencing the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Isn't that great? And tonight, you are being blessed with the stone of Asher. Hmm. Your bread shall be rich or fat. And normally when you see the word fat in Scripture, it's speaking of anointing. Hallelujah. It's speaking of the substance of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Glory. Now the blessing that Moses gave to Asher is this. And of Asher, Deuteronomy 33, 24. Of Asher, he said, more blessed than sons is Asher. Wow. May, in May, we got some maize to, be, to, to take hold of. May he be favored by his brethren. And I just want to release the blessing of favor. It is time that Zion be favored. Amen. And may he dip his foot in what? Oil, Oil or fatness or the anointing. Hallelujah. And truly, Father wants our feet, our walk, our thought life to be dripping with his presence. With the anointing, glory, the anointing of God breaks every yoke. Isn't that good news? God wants a people who are truly moving in strength and power, in love, in unity, and in anointing, and in a powerful demonstration of the goodness of the great King. Hallelujah. And in the message, is it says, Asher, best blessed of sons. Isn't that good? The, the best blessed of sons. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to read a few more parts of this blessing. Deuteronomy 33 verse 28. So Israel dwells in security. Israel means prevailer with God and man. Israel is your nature. Hallelujah dwells in security. The fountain of Jacob secluded or undisturbed, hallelujah, in a land of grain, new wine, and anytime you see wine, it's the anointing of joy. His, his heavens, he walked in high places, Truly, God wants us to walk in high places. His heavens also drop down dew. What does this mean? There was a dripping of, when you see the word dew, there was dew on Mount Hermon. Dew is speaking of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit wants us to be immersed in the anointing oil of His presence. Glory. Hallelujah. Heaven drips the dew. Who is a people, or verse 29, blessed are you, O Israel. Who is like you, a people saved by the Lord, who is the shield of your help? Or he is the shield who defends you. You've got a shield, faith, who defends you. And not only do you have a shield of faith, who's a person, this says, and the sword of your majesty. It's the sword who is the living word, who is Christ, who, bring, who brings you triumph. Hallelujah. Truly, Father is wanting a victorious company who triumphs. 
because of truth. Make sense? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for your love and your presence that truly causes us to triumph and causes us to drip with the anointing from the top of our head, our thought life, to the very soles of our feet. Glory. Well, Asher, we see, means happy and blessed. And in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, there's many scriptures we could speak about the blessings. Psalms 1 is one of them. How blessed are those who don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, but they're like a tree that's planted by streams of living water, whatever they do, prospers and is fruitful. Hallelujah. We're um, going to look here at number 6, verse 24. This is a priestly blessing, and you are all kings and priests of a royal priesthood. So we're going to accept this as our priestly blessing even tonight. <clears throat> the Lord bless you and keep you. Put your name in there. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Verse 26, the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. This means may God look you full in the face and make you prosper. Meaning, he's saying, look me in the eyes. Look a little higher, because when you're looking at him eye to eye, you're seeing into the eternal realm. Look him full in the face as we allow our faces to connect. When someone gets in your face, you're going to connect one way or another. And truly, God is wanting a covenantal, divine connection where we look at him completely in the face. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth, the temporal, they're going to grow dim. And we're going to get connected with the eyes of fire. We're going to have a, a nose that discerns and smells properly. We're going to have a mouth that truly has a sharp two-edged sword because we become what we look at. It's like face intimacy. Intimacy. Look me full in the face. Hallelujah. And he truly wants to confirm blessings. So they shall invoke my name on the sons of Israel, and then I will bless them. We see here in the tribe of Asher that God wants a people to know the anointing that is theirs because he gives all to his sons. He's a good dad who releases blessings, empowerings, divine life, and an operation that causes us to awake to love and to awake to truth and to awake to the eternal that we have been beckoned and called to. Hallelujah. There's a calling that we are hearing from Zion and that's truly saying, sons arise and let the river of life flow over you and let it flow out of you to bring joy, strength, and peace to your being and to those who you've got influence over. For Father gets glorified when the glory flows out. You're satisfied and He's glorified. Amen? Amen. So we just release the blessing of the tribe of Asher where God smiles on you. And number 624 that's down there, God bless you and keep you. This is the message. Verse 25, God smile on you. Can you see, even look in the spirit now, can you see him smiling on you? Because when you see Father smile, you are going to smile. 
God smile on you and gift you. Wow. God look you full in the face and make you prosper. Glory. And with that, Ken, if you'll come up and close us out. Hallelujah. Amen. Such rich imagery in the scripture, the word that is used tonight. And some people may ask, well, why do you relate to so much symbolism? Particularly when you use the Old Testament, because God set it there structurally to help us to understand the design of what's unfolding, that you and I become the living fulfillment of. Buildings were built of stone, and we are spoken of as living stones. Peter emphasizes this in his writings. You also, as living stones, are being built up into such a house to contain a royal priesthood. And all of this language that is used in the Old Testament, when we use the numbers 12 or 7 or 3, Everything is not simply symbolic. It, there's a certain energy or a design force that moves through those symbols to work in our life to complete a divine master plan. It is an architectural plan. God is the builder of all things. He is the builder of the city. He's the builder of the city Jesus is the builder of our faith, the architect, the builder, and the finisher of our faith. So all of these structures, while it may be sometimes difficult to comprehend, if we understand what's being said, whether I understand it or not, just like electricity, it's not a question whether I understand the mechanisms of it, I appreciate the manifestation, the power of it. God knows what He's doing. He knows what He's doing in our life. And faith is an agreement and acceptance in God's divine plan in our life. And so much of this imagery that's been used, we speak about the 12 stones, the 12 gates, the 12 is all foundation. Foundation to what? A city. But that city also contains a temple. And we speak about, she read from Psalm 48, about Mount Zion. Great is Mount Zion. Beautiful elevation for the si on the sides of the north. Notice the word elevation. There's a oh. vertical elevation. The joy of the whole earth. What is being said there? When Zion is raised unto its high place, the whole earth will be filled with joy. When Zion is the chief of the mountains, in other words, when two, true restoration comes to the earth, through a people, through the sons of God. Not only will there be peace, there will be great joy. There will be an alignment, just like in Zechariah, it says these seven, the eyes of the Lord, or the eyes of upon the stone, will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hands of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the builder. Joshua was the priest. The builder actually was of the tribe of Judah. He was a type of a king. And we see what's happening in the Old Testament is the bringing together of the prophet, priest, and king, particularly the priestly and the kingly office. And in Christ Jesus, all this is fulfilled. So the house of God is a temple. It's not a palace, it's a temple. And what we see is that God is restoring a holiness in His people to bring them near in His presence to express joy in the midst of his people and to bring joy into the world and so no matter what we seem to see happening in the world as darkness seems to run its course a great light is coming shining forth through a people a people who know the joyful sound praise God these are the trumpets of the Lord these are the stones of the structure of God's house so just know this Whatever you may think you're going through in this stage of your life, the most important development that you and I are going to experience is in our being joined together as a company, as a house. Because you see, stones are in a sense cemented together.
And when we're joined together, he just joined to the Lord as one spirit. And our joining together will come our strength, will come our power. Therefore, whatever our works, our functions are, will be supplemented by the strength of our being joined together. So you can see when you see words like joy or happy or blessed, there is a happiness, a great joy when we see the elevation of God's kingdom coming in our life. When we are the head, not the tail, above, not beneath. That's why our faith is so important. Praise God, it's setting things aright. The world that's been turned upside down is being turned right side up. Praise God. And that's because of what's taking place in you and I. Praise God. We're so thankful for those of you that have joined us by video. We encourage you to look, go to our website, thegloriousrestoration.com, for other meetings. Also, these videos you can see there. And share them with others. And take heart, take hope. God is doing a great work through us, and it's coming forth from us. Don't look outside to find it coming. Look within to see it moving and release it into the earth. Praise God that that river may flow. Even as a river flowed into the garden, it came out four rivers, praise God, which four means the symbol of the earth. So as she was sharing, the Holy Spirit flows into us and then flows out into the world. Those are the rivers, praise God, that Christ Jesus spoke forth. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the joy, the gladness, the happiness of the life of God within us. And when you are evident in your people, when there is an alignment, or a Psalms 133 anointing that flows from the head to the feet, or a spirit of unity, when things get rightly aligned, there is peace, there is joy, there is a prosperity that comes. And we just pray upon each of us, Father, that we may move more intently, more deeply, and more intimately in the knowledge of these things as the symbols become living expressions through our faith, and our faith becomes light to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being with us.